Oh, Ellery, I just um, approved your success in education, like the SharePoint thing. Let me know if you still can't get in. Okay, I like I had to like request access, and then it gave me access, so I can I can access everything so far. Okay, if anything pops up, let me know. But you should be able to now. Okay. Perfect. Okay, hey, before we let him in, I'm going to share this video and um, see if it works for you. The unfortunate thing is that um, it is like the way she sent it. The video is so small on the thing, <laughs> like so small. So we'll see. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> I don't know what to do. She has like a little head. I don't know what to do about this. Um, let's see if I can zoom it in. Zoom in. Zoom in. No, it makes it, what the heck? It makes it smaller. I cannot. This is so funny. Okay. Anyway, I'm just going to see if you can hear it when I play it, okay? Nope. When you shared your screen, did you hit, let's see. Did you hit the little share sound box at the bottom? Um, let's see. Share computer sound and industry exploration and i'm okay Got it. i'm gonna download it and see if it gives me something better i doubt it but who knows Hello, welcome. Okay, I guess not, but this is gonna be what we're gonna have to do, <laughs> LOL. Okay, um, Ellery, you are good to share your screen with the little um, welcome, you know, like the QR code thing, and then you can let everyone in. Ellery, you're muted, but I just let everyone oh. in. Can you, okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome. All right, give you a minute to get your audio all set up. Okay. Awesome. Thank you all so much for coming on time. We always appreciate how punctual you all are. Thank you so much. Just wait one more minute to let some stragglers come through.
Awesome. Okay. So while we are getting started, just remember that we have to take attendance every time. And that is so that every time you come to a workshop, you get your name entered into our drawing for a thousand dollar scholarship at the end of the year. So the more that you come, uh, the more likely or the more chance that you have to get your name drawn for that scholarship at the end of the year. Um, so you can use this QR code or you can use the, we will put the link in the chat so that you can just click on the link as well if you want to. Um, actually, Ellery, if you want to share your screen, I can just put the link up really quick. All right, let me find that. Give me one second here. Okay. Okay, so you can use that QR code or you can use this link that I just put in the chat there. All you need to do is fill out your name. So we'll give you another minute to do that. Awesome. Okay. So hopefully you were able to fill that out since you only just have to put your first name or your first and last name there. Please remember to put your first and last name. There are a few of you that have the same first name. So if you only put your first name, um, I'm not going to know who you are and I might put the wrong name in the drawing. So please make sure to put your first and last name in there. Um, otherwise I won't be able to put it in the drawing. And so hopefully you got that all done. Really quick, we are going to take one of our pictures uh, like we do every time. We take a little screenshot because we like to put it on the uh, like to put it on our on our LinkedIn. So uh, Ellery, I think you're good to stop sharing your screen so that we can get everyone in. Perfect. OK, I'll just let everyone once again, if you can all um, take your turn your cameras on really quick, you don't have to leave them on the whole time, even though I would love if you did. Um, and I'm going to take a screenshot really quick for us. Make sure there's no one in the waiting room here. OK, so if everyone can turn their cameras on. Ready. OK, now smile. One, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect. Thank you all so much. Love the cat. Thank you so much for having your cat in there as well. That's so fun. Um, okay. Thank you all so much for coming and for joining us today. Uh, towards the end, just in case you didn't get uh, the link in your chat, I'll put it towards the end after our speaker is done just to make sure that you get... Um, and get your attendance in there. Thank you all so much for coming and for being on time. Okay, so we have a different format that we're going to do today. And that is because our speaker, Shauna, she really wanted to be here for the workshop. And then something came up and she, um, she wasn't able to be here in person. And so what she did instead, because she's amazing, is she filmed her speech for you. So she recorded it. She had a few guest speakers come in and help her with it. And so we are going to watch her video for it. And then after that, we're going to get into breakout rooms and kind of talk about it. And so it's going to be a lot of fun because it's going to be an opportunity for you to interact and get to know each other a little bit better. Um, Cause I know most of the workshops or all of the workshops until now have been just you all um, coming, listening to the speakers and then leaving. And this one, you get to you get to listen to a speaker and then you also get to interact with each other afterwards. So hopefully you have fun. Hopefully you enjoy that. It's going to be a great opportunity for you to get to know each other a little bit better and to kind of, you know, spend some time talking about yourself and and sharing some of the goals that you have. So that's kind of the going to be what we're doing today. Um, I don't have any announcements for you. We do have a workshop next month as well, but because it's 
uh, December because it'll be the holiday time. We are doing it in the middle of December, kind of like what we're doing for this month. We didn't want to uh, interrupt Thanksgiving or for any of your holidays or anything. So we are um, going to have the next workshop December 14th, I think is what it is. It's going to be the week before when we normally do it. Let me just double check on that for you. Yes, December 14th is going to be our next workshop, and it's going to be about college, higher education, trade school, all that good stuff. So um, be sure to have that in, in place. Obviously, we're going to send out a newsletter, and then, of course, we'll send out the recording for this workshop if you ever want to come back to it. But uh, I'm going to play, I'm going to share my screen, and I'm going to play Shauna's video for you. It's about 20 minutes long of her thoughts and and her thoughts about our workbook topic and it is going to kind of give you a better idea of where Shauna's at and she's going to give you some advice of things that you need to be thinking about for now um, just to kind of give you a an idea of who this is. Shauna is one of our mentors and she is amazing. She was so excited when I first was talking to her about becoming a mentor. She was really actually specifically looking forward to leading a workshop. And so she's really sad she couldn't be here in person, but she is really excited to be able to still share some of her thoughts with you. Um, if any of you made a LinkedIn from last month when we talked about LinkedIn, I would encourage you to find Shauna on LinkedIn and let her know how much you appreciate her time that she took to make this video for you and be able to still share with you some of her thoughts, even though she has been super busy this month and she still took the time to make this video for you. But um, Shauna is, I'm just pulling up her bio here. So Shauna is a CPA, she has an MBA and she's into financial consulting. And so she's in the finance world, which is super cool, very uh, male dominated world. And she is a partner at Clark Rasmussen Taylor. So they're CPAs, which basically means they do a lot of things with money. They do a lot of things with accounting, finance. It's a really hard, um, uh, it's a really difficult industry to break into and to enjoy. I took a few finance classes in college and they were so difficult for me. So anyone who does finance, I really respect. Um, and so anyway, we are going to look at a video from her uh, and she will share a little bit more about herself with it with you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share that. Again, also, um, I don't know why, but the format that this video is in, her like picture for it is super small. Um, luckily she doesn't have anything like she doesn't have any slides or anything. I don't think to share with you. So it's not like you're going to have to read anything. It's just kind of her talking to you. Um, but again, it's really small. Uh, so kind of a interesting setup. So I apologize for that, but hopefully you still get something out of it. Okay. Let me make sure I'm sharing my sound here. Share computer sound. All right. And here we go. Did you share sounds? Yeah, can you hear it? No. You can't hear it? No? Okay. It says I'm sharing my sound here. Let's try it again. Hello, welcome. This course is on career and industry exploration, and I'm excited to be here with you. I wish I could have done this live so that we could be more interactive, but hopefully you will get to know me well enough that if you see me at an event or anywhere else, you will come up and tell me you watched this and introduce yourself and we can get to know each other that way. It's kind of crazy to think about your career as a very young person. I think we have some people listening to this that might be as young as seventh, eighth grade, junior high. 
Uh, first of all, I want to say you shouldn't worry about this, but we want you to just start to become aware of what other people do and why. I'm sure you've been asked or have thought about the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? That's a really hard question to answer and silly when you really think about it. What adults might really be asking you is, what are you observing that people actually do all day for work? And they kind of want to know what you're thinking about that. When you become an adult, you realize that you have to exchange value for value. We don't, we do this in the form of money. Sometimes value or someone values something you have to offer. And since they don't know what you need, they give you money. Money is the medium of exchange that we use to value someone else, something someone else has given us. It's our currency. Did you know right now in your life, you're creating your own value that you will be able to exchange in the future? If you are in school, you're learning how to write, how to work on work with other people, how to listen, how to respect people, how to solve problems and learn actual subjects. Reading creates value. Sometimes you create value and it's hard. And sometimes you create value and it's easy. You create value when you travel, for example, because it's an opportunity to learn and observe how other people do things. When you travel, you should pay attention and ask questions about as many things as possible. A curious and observant person creates a lot of value for themselves. It's also fun to learn skills as a young person, even skills that you can monetize. Monetize means exchange for value. One of my daughters loved to bake bread. She would grind the whole, the wheat. She'd bake the bread on Sunday for neighbors who would pay her for a hot loaf of bread. She would deliver it every week. So she had regular customers. And then I told her that if she saved and invested the money and didn't spend it, I would match the amount of money if she invested it. And we learned together how to invest money so that it could grow for her while she was sleeping. Learning so all she had to do was earn the money once and then give it to someone else, which is called investing. And they would continue to work at their jobs and give her a little bit of their profit. That's how investments make money. Learning sports creates value. Having experiences that you can talk to other people about is how you network. Sports helps us to have things to talk about sometimes. Think of questions you can ask others that will help you know what experiences other people have had in their lives. Like, did you play sports as a kid? Have you traveled? Things like questions like that. This also expands your awareness to what other people do and how they live. Questions like what countries have you traveled to? Tell me about the people in those countries. How is How has it been different from where we live? What did you like about it? What did you not like about it? Was it scary to be in a different country? Another thing you can do is start to observe the things you like and the things that you don't like, but be very careful to judge it. Sometimes when you don't like something at first, maybe math, for example, and you put a lot of hard work into it and become good at it, it turns into something you really like. I tell people that I make a lot of money doing things that no one else knows how to do or likes to do. Accounting, I'm an accountant. And not very many people like accounting, so they pay me to do it for them. And it's actually pretty easy. All I had to do was tell myself that I liked math. And let me tell you something else about accounting. It is a tiny amount of math. It's just math with money. It's very easy math. It's not calculus. It's not, it's basic algebra sometimes, but it's not geometry or trigonometry or calculus. It is very basic math, like one plus one equals two with more numbers on the end. I think it's really fun to understand something that's very complicated. 
I personally like the challenge. For me, when something is really hard, I like to work at it until I completely understand it. And then I can make a decision about if I like it or not. I never make that decision when I'm first exposed to it. The other thing I think is important to be careful with is words and labels. For example, think about the word work. What do you think about when I say that word? If you're like most people, it probably isn't something you'd naturally want to do on what, for example, on a Saturday when you're not going to school. Then I started to think about what would happen if everyone, oh, sorry. Um, if that's true that you don't like the word work and that brings up things that you don't want to do, why does everyone do it? Recently, I thought about what would happen if I didn't work? What if I didn't have to work and I chose not to? Then I started to think about what would happen if everyone felt that way? How would I get food? How would I build a house to live in? How would I travel? How would I live? We all have to work together to contribute. Fortunately or unfortunately, we assign our currency to other people's value. One thing I want to point out is that value and worth are not the same. Everyone has the same worth. All of us have the same worth. Not only that, but our worth never changes. That's really important to remember because sometimes people interchange the word worth and value. Like how much are you worth? I like to be very clear on value and worth being different. We are born with the same amount of value and we die with the same amount of value. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We're born with the same amount of worth. See, I just did it. And we die with the same amount of worth. That doesn't change. Sometimes our value is outside of our control. For example, if I love to play the piano and I'm very good at it, someone may decide that it's not value enough for them to exchange their currency for. Does that make me less valuable or less worthy? Maybe, maybe not. However, it for sure doesn't make me less worthy. However, with all my life experiences, I may learn how to take that skill and make it valuable, that skill of playing the piano, to someone that does want to exchange their currency for it. Part of the game we play is to try and figure that out. Everyone needs to exchange their value in order to buy the other things they need. Because of this, there are two parts of the equation. One is called income. That is what people pay for what, when we give them something that they value. And the other is how we spend the money that they gave us. The great news is that we all, we have a choice in both. If we want to spend a lot, we need to learn how to create a lot of value so that we can receive more income. If we don't care about spending a lot, we may not need to create as much value. Here's a game you can play. When an adult says something that you do not understand, ask them questions until you do. For example, I'm an accountant. I am what's called a CPA. If I tell you that, what do you think? Do you know what that is? Do you know what I do? Ask me questions. Some people, some young, young people don't know what an accountant is and not anyone knows what a CPA is. CPA stands for a credential, which I've tested it, I had to take tests, go to school and earn, which is called a certified public accountant. That's what a CPA is. It's a short term for being an, a certain type of accountant. When you, when you ask questions and realize if you asked me questions, you could not ask stupid questions because you're young. People love it when young people ask stupid questions. What you might think is a stupid question. They may laugh at it. You shouldn't care because there's no such thing as stupid questions. When you ask them, it alerts me. If you ask me a question, you might think it's stupid, but what it does is it alerts me of how I can do a better job explaining something. If you said, for example, oh, you help people lose weight. I would say not really, but sort of. It would first of all tell me that you have really never heard of the word accountant or know someone that was an accountant. 
Then I would explain to you that when people make money, they have to report what they make to the government and pay taxes. That is one of the things that is required of us. Taxes are what government the government uses to provide everyone with things they need regardless of their income. It pays for parks. It helps support people who cannot work. It pays for young people to go to school. So every year, your parents probably prepare a tax return and report all the money they earned. Accountants help them do this if it is complicated. Accountants also help businesses do this because businesses have to report their financial activities to the government too. There are rules you have to know and accountants become experts at learning those rules and helping other people obey the laws. If someone asks me what I do and I tell them an accountant and they don't ask me any more questions, they haven't learned too much about me. But if they ask more questions, they could create a little value themselves in understanding something like my industry that they might have not understood. When I talk to professional musicians, for example, I love to ask them about the things that frustrate them with their industry. One of them is that they get asked to perform for free. This awareness is helpful for me because I bet that they work harder at learning their skill, playing the piano or their instrument, than I do at learning rules about accounting. And yet people don't usually ask me to do their accounting for free. It helps me understand other people better. And while this all happens, I think I'm creating value for myself. That musician may become a friend because they appreciate that I'm aware of their situation and want to help others become aware. They may also want me to help them figure out the best way that, that they can create money from what they're doing. I might have some great ideas for them. The better that I understand how to make money, the better I can leverage what I know to help them. Everyone wins when this happens. The great thing is that you can do that right now. If you don't understand something, don't be afraid to ask. You'll become less and less afraid to ask questions and it will create value for you. These little pieces of value that you're creating from going to school, from serving other people, from traveling and all the things that you're doing in your life right now, create are little deposits of value in you. Then when you go to college or you add um, education and experiences, they become more and more valuable. And all of a sudden you have something that you can exchange your value for someone else's value. So I know some of this is a little bit boring, but what I want you to realize is at your stage, just be curious. I would say that you just need to ask a lot of questions and be really curious. And how you become curious is if you don't understand something, ask a lot of questions and get to know a lot of people. You, when you're with your parents, you can even ask questions in front of them to adults. Adults love to hear your questions. Um, I also thought it would be fun to have a few people tell you about their experience in how they have created value in their life so far. And some of them are still very young. Brooklyn is one of the girls that I am a mentor to, to in Women Who Succeed. And she is amazing. She's a freshman at the University of Utah. And I asked her to do a little video of what she would like to tell you. So I'm going to turn the time over to Brooklyn. Hey everyone, my name is Brooklyn Bagley. I'm a freshman at the University of Utah and I'm also one of Sean Rasmussen's mentees for this year. And I would say that one thing that would have really helped me while I was going into high school is being open to the idea that your interests can change and so can your friends. And how it's completely normal for that to happen and it doesn't you know, have to be a bad thing. <laughs> and that it can actually lead you down to what you might want to do in your career or in your life or what you want to learn in college or maybe as a trade. And so how this related for me was that I was really interested in acting and film and I was super passionate about it to the point where I wanted it to be my career and my job in life. 
and maybe move to a place where I could pursue it actually seriously. And I was passionate about it for a time, of course, but then eventually that changed and I had just a really hard time accepting that something I had put so much time and effort into maybe just wasn't right for me anymore and how much of a struggle that can be. But by staying in it longer than what I really wanted to actually limited me to exploring ideas that I was actually interested in. And it was much better for me to just stop and to explore something else to do with my time that actually helped fulfill me a lot better than that extracurricular did. And that's not to say that that's going to be everybody's situation. If It's really all about doing what feels best for you. If staying in the thing that you've done for maybe since you were a kid is what feels good to you, it's all about trusting yourself. And so that's perfect to do. But really, it's all about having confidence in yourself to do whatever you want. And you have so many opportunities to explore career paths and hobbies in high school and maybe even meet new friends and i would say that being more comfortable with going with the flow of things is one of the best things you can do for yourself in high school and it'll actually open up more for you opportunity wise by having that positive mindset than being uncomfortable with change i guess i'll say so yeah thank you so much you guys for watching and thank you shauna for asking me to do this video and i hope you guys enjoy the rest of the session bye thank you brooklyn i am very excited to watch brooklyn in the next few years to see where her career and college career for sure ends up and goes she is a brilliant girl and i really enjoyed working with her but now to end i want to introduce you to ashley she is one of my mentees who is near and dear to my heart she we have the same passion really which is accounting if that's considered a passion but i love her story too i've asked her to t kind of tell her path from high school through college and not knowing exactly what she wanted to do and um, where she ended up in accounting and um, I just love her story and so I'm going to turn the time over to Ashley for a minute and then I'll circle back around. Hey guys, I'm Ashley and Shauna asked me to kind of speak to you about how I went from like junior high, high school to college and where I am now um, and how I decided on like my career path and what I wanted to do. Um, so to start, I actually got my associate degree in high school, and so um, my like high school really pushed for science and math courses, um, and to like get a degree in like more of the sciences field. Um, and so I thought I wanted to do chemistry, and so I wanted to be a pharmacist. I quickly learned that was not true, um, and don't be afraid to like change your change your major because i've changed mine three times so at first i wanted to be a chem major um quickly learned yeah i was it was interesting but i was not good at it and i did not enjoy doing it um secondly i switched to psychology i worked with some people um, who had some mental disabilities um and i thought i would really enjoy like helping them and being a therapist for them and I also quickly learned I did not want to do that either. Um, so here I am, and I am now an accounting major. I'll have my bachelor's degree this December, and I'll start my master's in um, the spring. But I also have a full-time job offer, um, so I will also be working full-time at an accounting firm in the spring as well. Um, so that was awesome. How I, I think how I transitioned from school to getting a job was just networking. Um, I want to really like emphasize how important that is. Um, so if you can go to any networking events with companies, I would recommend that just because the more you can talk and get to know them, the more they're gonna want you at their company and the more job offers you're gonna get. Um, I applied for four jobs and I got four offers. Um, and that was just for me networking over the years of me being in the accounting program at my college. Um, 
So yeah, I think that's about it. Don't be afraid to change your majors and don't be afraid to um, fail. And then as long as you keep going, failure is, it's kind of inevitable. So I wish you all the luck. Oh, Ashley is awesome. I'm just so excited to see where her career goes. And I'm so grateful for this program. I feel like I will be friends with Ashley and Brooklyn. And Brooklyn is an amazing person. And I thank you for watching this um, horribly edited uh, presentation on career and in industry exploration. But, and I wish you all the best. I really wish I had a program like this when I was in high school and college and your age. And the fact that you are here and you're listening to this tells us a lot and that you come to events and you are participating. You're doing all the things we've talked about today. We all know you are, but um, that's the kind of people that you are and we can sense that you're gonna be amazing and we are lucky to know all of you. Good luck with everything and we hope to see you soon. Awesome. Okay, so Shauna and her two mentees gave some really cool insights. I'm really grateful to them for being willing to record for us and give us some of their some of their thoughts. They gave some really cool advice. So I hope all of you were able to gain a few things from it. There were a few parts in there that I know that I would have appreciated when I was in seventh through tenth grade because that is that is a difficult time in life, right? Like you've got a lot of questions that people asking are asking of you, a lot of things that you need to be thinking about as you're going into high school. And so what we want to do for the rest of the time is we're going to have a little activity. And since our group is pretty small today, we're going to do it all together. So I'm going to let Ellery, one of our Women Who Succeed mentees, and she's also one of our interns who helps me with a bunch of different things that we do here at Women Who Succeed. She's going to introduce it and kind of uh, tell us what we're going to do for this new activity. Okay. Hi, guys. I am Ellery. So for this activity, we saw how Shauna's mentees talked about their career choices and where they wanted to go. So we're going to give each of you guys a few minutes to talk, think about your top three career choices and what you want to do and go into. And then after those few minutes are up, we're going to take turns sharing with the group why we are interested in the three career choices we chose and what we want to do with them and any goals you have with that career choice. And then this is an opportunity to articulate your goals and get to know other junior mentees. So take advantage of it ask questions, and then just be yourself throughout the whole process. Awesome. Thanks, Ellery. So uh, really quick, I'm going to put the attendance link in the comments one more time in case you uh, showed up late or haven't seen it in your chat box yet. That should be there now. Please fill that out if you haven't already with your first and last name. Um, so like Ellery said, we're going to give you a few minutes and we're going to try to get through as many of you as possible. Um, be sure to ask each other questions, be yourself. We're all friends here, right? We're all trying to make new friends. That's why you're part of the program. We're trying to support each other. And we are just going to give you a few minutes now to kind of think about what your top three career choices or industries or fields that you're interested in right now. Um, and then we're going to kind of talk about it. So I will give you, let's see, it's 507 right now. Let's try at 510 to come back and we'll share some things.
I can start off to give everyone a second to think about it and kind of share my own experience. So when I was in junior high and going into high school, I really wanted to do physical therapy. Um, I was a really competitive swimmer for years and I tore my rotator cuff and I, it got me interested in biology, like human biology, anatomy. Um, and so I thought I was dead set that that's what I wanted to do was work in physical therapy. And in 10th grade, actually, I did a job shadow and realized that while I thought it was really interesting academically, I did not want to do that for the rest of my life because um, it felt like it was the same thing every day. And so I started looking into different options. And over the years, um, my career path has changed a lot. So I started out, I got my bachelor's degree in recreation management. Um, I worked for different cities, um, managing their recreation programs, like swimming lessons, their lifeguarding, their just their different programs that they offered. Um, and I realized I really liked the business side of it. So then I got a master's degree in business administration and I started working for the Red Cross and realized that I loved nonprofit and I loved making a difference and giving back to my community. And so that's where I am today. I work for success in education and women who succeed, but it's been a long windy path of finding different things that I enjoy that interest me. And, you know, that experience that I had in 10th grade really kind of shifted the trajectory of what I was interested in because of that job shadow. So that's a little bit about me and my path, but I'd love to hear from you guys and kind of what you've experienced. Awesome. Thanks, Mallory. That was a great start. So who wants to go first? Who wants to be brave and share three jobs or career fields that you're interested in? Okay. Right. Is it Raya or Raya? It's Rhea. Rhea? Okay, Rhea, start us off. So, three can, career choices that I ever want. My top one is being an actress because I love acting. My second one would be a teacher because I love being with little kids. And my third choice would be a nanny because I love being with little kids. <laughs> Awesome. That's really cool. So what are some, are you taking any like acting classes or anything that you're interested I've in? I've taken acting classes before. Cool. Awesome. Love it. That is so cool. Thank you for sharing. Does anyone have any questions for Rhea? Um, okay. Yeah. What acting classes have you taken, um, Rhea? Do you just take like normal acting or? Rhea, what do you think? Sorry, I didn't hear. She said, what acting classes have you taken? Like, do you take normal acting classes or specific ones? I've done um, theater foundations. I've actually auditioned for a show before. And also I did a camp in, I forgot where it was called, but anyway, we made this movie and it wasn't presented to the whole world, but there were some news people there. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Mia, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, so some industries that I'm interested in is traveling because I love going places and just exploring the culture there and just what they do. Um, I like, I'm also into um, like technology and like programming and things like that. And I know that industry has been wanting women. So that, so that was another one I'm interested in. And also um, I'm interested in like leadership positions. I'm on student council and I'm the president on student council and that has, I really enjoyed that, so. Awesome, yeah, those are three really cool um, industries to be interested in. And there's definitely a need for women in tech. Uh, is there a specific part of tech that you'd be interested in doing like computer coding or anything like that? Like do you have any specifics that you've looked into yet? Um, I, I'm more interested into the coding or maybe like, like 
the design and like layout of like technology and yeah so awesome Awesome. That's so cool. Well, remind me to send you an email about a program that we have. It's called Code to Success, and it helps you learn how to code and do that kind of back-end technology stuff for free. Um, and it's super fun. It's just like a program over the summer that you can do on your own, or you can go to your school and do it. It's a lot of fun. So awesome. It looks like we had a question. Faith? I actually have, I am in Code to Success right now. Awesome. Oh, oh perfect. Cool. Were you going to tell her that too? Yeah, that's um, why, that's why I raised my hand. Just great. Mine and that's it. Okay, Faith, what do you think about Code to Success? It's, I really like it. I'm okay. in, next year will be year three. Oh, perfect. Awesome. So Faith, what do you want to do? Why are you taking Code to Success? What do you want to do for work with Code to Success? I just am kind of learning how to code for like fun, kind of. And I also, I know that there's a lot of well-paying jobs, especially in the computer safety part, mm -hmm. like really high paying jobs. So I'm looking at those too. Yeah, it's true. There's a lot of really high paying jobs. There's a lot of need for it. There's especially need for women to do it. Mm -hmm. um, is anyone else in the group interested in like computers or coding? Ellery's doing some of it. Yes. Anyone else? I am. Paige. Awesome. Paige, tell us a little bit about what you want to do. Okay. So um, I was in Code to Success for actually two summers in a row. Cool. And then I've also been taking a robotics class at my high school. And that was really fun. It was um through Bridgerland, actually, Bridgerland Technical College, and we got to play with big, fancy, expensive robots, and that was really fun for me, so I'm thinking about that. Wow, that's so cool. I'm so glad that so many of you are in Code to Success or have done it. I saw Rhea said that she's done it, too. Um, that is super exciting, and especially now you guys know that a few of you are interested in doing the same things, um, and so that's really cool. You guys can connect on that. Uh, Ellery, do you want to share a little bit about your experience of what you're studying right now and, you know, kind of related to, to tech stuff? Okay. So I am currently studying data science at the University of Utah. And data science is basically using code to pull data offline and from like charts and all this stuff. So right now I'm in a lot of computer science courses. So we do a lot of coding. And this past assignment, we coded an Excel spreadsheet from scratch, which was pretty cool. And right now we're working on making a snake game that can be played from multiple computers, but you can all play together. So that's been really fun, but they, there are not that many women in my class. It's a class of about 300 people, and I'd say maybe 30 girls total are in that class. And so if you are interested in going into tech, do it 100%. It is so awesome. We need more girls, and it is so fun. It is honestly so fun. And so if you want to do it, I think you should. Perfect. Thank you. And now you know Ellery who can help you and give you any kind of tips. So once again, if you've got LinkedIn, find everyone that you're meeting on LinkedIn or find a way to get in contact with each other and so that you can support each other and be those women in tech that can uh, support each other. Is there anyone else who wants to share what they're interested in or any careers that they're looking into? Um, let's see. Lily, do you want to go? Um, so the main career I'm interested in is like a cooking job, specific, like, um, I looked into just being a chef or just having that kind of job. Um, but another thing that I've always, that has always really interested me is becoming an esthetician. And I was looking at like classes I can take and 
I don't really have a third one, but those are pretty much the two jobs that I would like to do. Yeah, those are awesome. Sorry, all the lights in our office just went off. So that's why it just got really dark in here. Um, but yeah, those are really cool. I was really interested in doing a job that involved cooking as well for a little while. Um, so that would be really cool. And I will try to think of any resources for you to do that. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing. Um, Faith and then Katie, you can go after Faith. Um, so I actually have a top four. Um, so one of them's a, a dance teacher, um, specifically Highland dance, and then an artist, and then of course the coder, like with the computer safety hardware thing, and acting. Awesome. Yeah, those are four awesome choices. Love that. Thank you. Highland dance is really cool. That'd be, a, that'd be an awesome thing to get into. I am oh. a Highland dancer. I know. I remember that on your yeah. application. That's super cool. How, do, how long have you been doing that? Uh, but hold on. Let me think. Let, let me do math just for like five seconds. Yeah. It's like five years. Awesome. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Five. It sounds like, it sounds like it's your thing then. Sounds like it's a good choice for you. That's really cool. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for sharing faith. Okay, Katie, do you want to go? And then Isabel, you can go next. Um, okay, so my top job is probably going to be like a travel agent because, I don't know, uh, my next door neighbor, she she's a travel agent for like a cruise line. And I think like it'd be really fun because you can travel a lot of places. Uh, but then my next one's like an engineer, like either mechanical or electrical. Because I did this like BYU cybersecurity camp and that like taught me how to code and stuff. Um, and then I don't really have a third one, but yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Travel agent sounds like a dream job. Get to travel and you get paid to do it. It sounds so fun. Yeah. So, and, and since you already know someone who kind of does that, that would be a great opportunity for you to kind of get in and see what they do and if they like it and how you can get started on it. So that's a great place to start. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Katie. Okay, Isabel, do you want to go next? And then Zoe, you can go after Isabel. Um, okay, so um, the first one that I'm really interested in is a book editor because I love reading and I think it'd be really cool to be able to edit books. And then um, the second one is an art therapist because I like doing crafts and I love when people are able to be helped through their therapy and then my third one would be a teacher because I love being like I love little kids and all of that so very cool awesome yes I think my roommate really wants to be a book editor. She also loves to read. So that would be fun. Okay, Zoe, you're up. Okay, so my first job, I want to be a geologist. Um, secondly, um, like I think being a fashion historian would be cool. And then I think animating would also be cool. Perfect, thank you. So many fun, cool options. I feel like the more that I talk to people about things that they're interested in or things that they want to do, the more I learn about how many different things there are that are out there. So kind of like in Shauna's presentation, just remember that you're allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to change your course of study. You're allowed to try a bunch of different things. Whatever you think will be the best option for you or whatever sounds interesting you just need to take the chance and and do it and go in whatever direction that you feel is going to be best for you or most exciting or anything like that. So we're running out of time. I want to give you a few extra minutes for your night. Is there anyone who really wants to share before we finish up? Monet, did you raise your hand or no? Okay, go ahead. Um, I don't know. Um, at the beginning of the year, I had like a sure idea of like, it was at the beginning of this year. And like, 
it started at the beginning of eighth grade. I really wanted to go into neuropsychology because that was really cool. But as I've been taking like science classes and stuff at school, I'm like, I don't think I want to do science analysis and lab reports every day of my life. So that's just been kind of a thing that I didn't really want to do. But I think um, international business would be really cool. Um, same with political science and um, psychology, I guess, in general. Yeah, those are all really fun things to study. I have studied a little bit of all three of those things. I ended up with international business. Do you speak any languages, any foreign languages? Yeah, I speak Chinese. Oh, me too. That's so cool. Very nice. Did you do the immersion program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I've been speaking before that too. So. Okay, well, then there you go. You're all set. That would be a cool path to go down. Um, mm -hmm. International business is super fun. And then political science and psychology is also very, very interesting. Very cool. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you so much for sharing. Uh, is anyone else dying to share or wants to ask any questions or talk about anything before we end for the night? Okay, well, then I'm going to give you a few extra minutes back for your night. Thank you so much for being willing to share and sit and chat and um, watching Shauna's video. I know she really wanted to be here, but please reach out to her on LinkedIn if you have one and let her know how much you appreciated it and that you um, were still grateful for her and all the time she put into preparing that for you. Thank you all so much for coming. It was great to see you again. If you ever need anything, reach out to us. We're always happy to help. If you ever have any questions about the workbook or any of the workshops. Um, but if not, if you don't have anything extra, then we will see you next month on December 14th for the next workshop. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.